Josh just came from a culture and a family where he was brought up to believe that you treat people well. Josh! Woo! It was all about just having fun, getting out there, playing as a team. I think Australians are taught to play tough together. He's got the courage of a lion. I hope that I can give these kids inspiration and be a role model for them to aspire to, to be like and, and be better than. You know, my mom, she, when I told her about the NBL, she was, she was so adamant on me going to college. She was pushed me to go to college. But once I finally convinced her to, to let me sign in the NBL, and I still remember the conversation I had with her, it was uh, in my living room in my house. And um, I said like, you know, look, guys have done this before me. And I think for me, this is the best route to go. And, and he changed his mind. So we got back from the college visit. You know, I, I, I don't want to go the college route anymore. I want to go, I want to play and stay in Australia, play one year here and then get, try and get drafted after my first year of NBL. So that's what he did. Once I decided to go to the NBL, it was a matter of picking a team and I had options. And obviously my dad being so involved with Melbourne, that was where my head was at. I wanted to be in Melbourne. And, and then anyway, we, we get into the recruiting process and Jeff comes into the picture. So I was aware of Josh at probably 15 years old, there's these off-season workouts that happen, you know, in most cities around the world that are basketball cities, and you get groups of guys to get together, no, no organization to it, just scrimmaging. And, and Andrew Gaze is actively involved in a lot of those workouts here in Melbourne. <laughs> I would check in periodically, and about a week and a half later, I guess, since, since my last check-in, Andrew called me. And I thought, oh, he, not unusual, he'd call about something, but he very rarely calls about players. And he literally just said to me, Jeff, get giddy. <laughs> so when he said that, I got on the phone to the owner of the Adelaide 36ers and said, I'm just asking you to go with me on this. And to his credit, he was tremendously supportive. Yeah, there was another club that was trying to get him to play for them. And I jumped on a plane with our GM of basketball, went to Sydney, uh, met Josh. I told him I understood the relevance of actually having a, a team to actually drive and that what a PG really wants to to develop their game is actually that that connection with the, with the front court but the ability to actually drive a lot of the on-court program and that seemed to resonate with Josh. There were a lot of clubs after him but I think we were able to offer something that gave him more court time. We were prepared to just go with him and have him as a starting caliber player. And really that was seen to be somewhere between brave and mad at the time, being that he was 17. And it's a, it's a man's league. It was pretty cool actually. There was a, there was a lot of buzz around the, around the team and, and the Giddy signing. Yeah, he took everything in stride. Whether he was starting or he was coming off the bench, he didn't really care. Um, as long as he was out there playing and, and always competed at a high level. So I think that was, yeah, a bit of a, a learning curve for him, but it didn't take him long. Like within a couple of games, he was just felt real comfortable. He was right at home and just was playing like he was in practice every day. I mean, he just had the whole package. And so it wasn't really that much of a stretch for us to, to see him as our, as our starting PG and then to really give him, you know, 30 minutes plus per game. Well, as soon as I stepped foot in Adelaide, um, I, had, I knew I had to be confident if, if I wanted to earn these guys respect and trust. And um, yeah, I, I, I tried to do that from day one. Yeah, I think I mentioned before, he's just got that air about him where he's not, he doesn't come across like overconfident, but he is. It's just like under the surface where he just knows I can do this, I'll get it done. That, is that in, in a belief? Yeah, it was interesting because his body type wasn't a, a young boy body type. He'd come, uh, he'd put in some work in the uh, in the off season in the lead up to us. His legs were getting big, and he was just he was really turning from boy to man in that time. I thought, you know, this guy's got everything. He's got all the talent in the world. He's from Central Casting in terms of his his profile, but he's got the courage of a lion. And as I got to know him more, I saw that that integrity. Uh, and that team first approach comes shining through on multiple occasions. As the season went on, uh, I gradually started going up. And, and you know, when you get to a point in mock drafts where you're, you know, in the lottery top 10, th th there is a bit of, you know, weight behind it. And that's when I knew that, you know, I was gonna get drafted. I still didn't know where. And then we got to a point where we were at the back end of the season. We were done from the playoffs. Um, I knew I was gonna get drafted. So we declared for the draft, um, ended the season, I think a few games out and, you know, started coming back to Melbourne to go ready for it.
The Oklahoma City Thunder select Josh Giddy from Melbourne, Australia, and the NBA Global Academy. To hear and see Adam Silver walk on the stage and call your name, I think I can speak for all the guys. It's just like it's a it's a heart stopping moment. I mean, you dream of this all your life, and you watch it on TV for so many years. For it to be a reality, and for me to be with the Thunder is um, it's a dream come true. You become attached in my role, almost like that father figure. You know, you become attached and they don't feel like your children, but they're kind of, you know, like that really close friend. And it's just a really proud moment to see that he fulfilled his dream. And to have the support from my family and, you know, friends from back home, it means the world to me. So I'm just looking forward to showing them what I can do on a world stage. Oh, I was so happy to see him drafted. Uh, we obviously knew he was going to get drafted and to go number six and wear number six for us and play for the sixes. It was kind of poetic for us. It's a pride issue for everybody in Australian basketball. You know, there's a collective ownership that happens here in a way that probably is quite rare. You know, people really latch on and say, you know, he's our guy. And I think you've seen that, you know, in this last period of time in this country when you see the response at basketball camps, the response down the street. The people really love just being part of that journey. Good job, boys. Thanks, Kitty. Probably a week or two after the draft, we went to Disneyland and um, we're in line and there was a little boy with a Giddy 3 jersey on it. It was the first one I'd seen. And I'm going to the girls, I'm hitting the girls going, look, look, there's a Giddy, someone's got a Giddy. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to go up and just give him a big hug. I was so excited. Oh, it's, it's surreal. Um, you know, there was one or two around in my year and, and now to see my name or Josh's name <laughs> on the back of these, these jerseys uh, is it, just really surreal. And, you know, I couldn't be prouder. I hope that I can give these kids inspiration and it's always a real privilege to, to be able to be in a position where I can inspire kids and, and be a role model for them to, to aspire to, to be like and, and be better than. Do you think I can make it to the NBA? Absolutely I do. There's a whole generation of kids coming through in Australia that are patterning that. Whereas maybe 20 years ago or 30 years ago, watching other players overseas, maybe, maybe they're more interested in just shooting the ball and scoring 40. And, and now it's cool to pass. And now it's, it, it's cool to be a good teammate because Josh has helped make that a cool thing. Josh has contributed is gonna, I think, extend for many, many years because he's given that, that younger generation self-belief in the possibility of making it in the NBA. And that, you know, is almost invaluable that contribution. You know, hopefully the next generation continues to get better and better and uh, we keep producing draft picks and NBA players and medals at Olympics and World Cups and it makes me really excited to think about you know the, the future and, and how good Australian basketball can be. One, two, three, OKC! Good job boys. Good job my man.